Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, depending on where you are joining from. My name is Patty, and I will be your host today. First, I want to thank all of you for registering and taking the time to join us today for this webinar on four important aspects of an Oracle EBS upgrade, technical deep dive. But before I begin, I have a few household announcements. At any time during the webinar, please feel free to ask questions by typing them into the questions or chat window on your screen. Questions will be answered at the end of the session. Following the webinar, the recording will be available and shared with all attendees. If you experience any technical issues, please visit the help menu in the GoToWebinar control panel at the right side of your screen. Lastly, I've placed all of you on mute to prevent any background noise. To provide a quick background on AppsTech, we provide customized IT consulting services for companies ranging from midsize to Fortune 100 enterprises across a wide range of industry verticals. Leveraging agile practices, AppsTech SMEs, subject matter experts, architects and associates build software applications, platforms and products that become primary drivers of innovation and revenue growth for our clients and their businesses. AppsTech is recognized for driving quality and speed to market when business success depends on the software applications. Founded in 2007, AppsTech is headquartered in Addison, Texas, with offices in USA, Middle East, and Hyderabad, India. The fast approaching deadline of December 2021, when the premier support for Oracle EBS R12.1.3 and earlier versions will end, calls for concerted planning and quick actions. The EBS community has less than six months to make some speedy decisions. IT leaders and business stakeholders need to be realistic and define a pragmatic EBS roadmap. The EBS upgrade requires a substantial amount of time, people, and above all, money. A critical set of automation tools are needed for doing a thorough assessment, upgrade, testing, and post-go live support analysis. Post the analysis, building business cases, getting stakeholders' permissions, organizing RFPs, selecting a partner, and so much more. We are talking about a lot of activities which are fragmented and the data is in silos. Integrating all of it and undertaking the right approach will be of immense importance. Now to introduce today's presenter, Venkata. Venkata, founder and principal of AppStack, has more than 25 years of consulting and technology leadership and management experience responsible for ensuring overall operational excellence across AppsTech, Venkata is passionate about providing exceptional service to clients while creating an environment that encourages teamwork and career growth for his colleagues. Venkata launched his career as an Oracle DBA in the pharmaceutical field. Upon moving to the United States, he was recruited by KPMG in 1998. During his stint in corporate America, he earned multiple awards, including the President Club Award for Exceptional Service at Campbell Soup. I will now hand it over to Venkata. And Venkata, the stage is yours. Thank you, Patty. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You know, wherever you guys are joining, thank you for taking time to you know, listen to uh, our technical deep dive on the uh, EBS upgrade. Um, here's what we're going to cover today. Why upgrade to latest, you know, EBS 12.2x? Well, it could be 12.2.9, 12.2.10. How do you plan for the upgrade? How do you optimize the upgrade? Provisioning environments, upgrade process. How do you test the upgrade? And we're going to conclude with a, you know, deep, uh, deep uh, technical drive. I'm sure you probably have seen this slide, you know, in, in social media or LinkedIn or, you know, in our past, you know, previous webinars. Oracle has released or, you know, continued investment and support, you know, on the, in the EBS versions till, you know, 2031. The, this 
R12, you know, 12 2X will be the, la the last, or I would say the major upgrades that, that you would, you know, think, um, you know, from, from, a, uh, uh, from a roadmap standpoint, and will be supported till 2031. Since 12 to 4 and higher, they've made, you know, uh, the uh, Oracle has been doing innovation with regular updates to uh, with ECC, Enterprise Command Center, during about more than 100, you know, 100 plus dashboards, you know, for majority of the functional, you know, functional modules. And we're going to talk about more in detail in the later slides as well. Continuous innovation on EBS 12 to you. Updating, you know, your underlining technology. If you're currently on 12.13 or even prior releases, 12.06, 12.03, whatever the release may be, you're up updating your underlying technology, replacing your application in a server 10G with Fusion middleware, 11G tech stack, as well as, you know, your, you know, footprint, you know, in terms of the, you know, the EBS, you know, point release upgrades, right? From 12 to, you know, 12 to X, like 12 to 4, 12 to 5, to 12 to, you know, 12 to 10. So let's talk about some key business drivers for the upgrade. You know, there are five, you know, key business drivers for the upgrade that we have, you know, seen with our, you know, experience working with, you know, customers, you know, here in the States as well as the rest of the world. One could be, you know, the first one could be platform. The platform is, as, you know, Patty mentioned, you know, in the intro introduction, premier support for 12.13, EBS releases or 12.1 X releases, the premier support is going to end this year, 2021. If you upgrade to the 12.2 X platform, the Oracle has promised all the customers the premier support is going to be till 2031. And moving to R12, or 12 to X is going to be the last major upgrade. Also, the platform, you know, the, one of the key business drivers is to get your, you know, the updates, tax updates, you know, your year end processing, patches. The second business driver you see is ADOP, online patching. One of the great advantage, you know, of ADOP, we're going to talk more in detail as well as in the later slides, is you have two file systems while your key business users are in the you know in the production live system you can apply to a patch field you know, the uh, the file system using online patches majority of the you know uh, close to 98 99 even 100 percent of the ebs patches can be applied through online patching ecc you can take advantage of the out of the box dashboards and reporting ECC, you know, the enterprise command center. And there's no additional licensing cost. You can, you can customize your ECC. You can create your own dashboards. If you're, if you have multiple desperate systems, you know, from a BI dashboarding standpoint, you can consolidate, you know, taking advantage of ECC as well. Fourth business driver, modern, modern UI. Many of the key features in the 12 to 9, 12 to 10, even 12 to 7, 12 to 8. Many, you know, you, you can get the rich, you know, modern UI, HTML and mobile interfaces. Extend your application framework as well as OAD frameworks. Functionality. Many enhancements across the product families, products and modules. One important thing is if, you know, if there's a driver or, you know, you can, you know, from an emerging technology standpoint, you can adopt the functionality, you know, uh, 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 the core product modules in terms of IoT, AI, machine learning, all that, you know, disruptive technologies as well. Major technology stack upgrade in application and database tiers. If you think about your current landscape or you're currently on 12, 12.1x environment, Compared to 12.2x, 
your OC4J and JSPs is going to be replaced with your WebLogic server, WebLogic JSPs. This is mainly on the application tier. Your, your you know, thin client or connectivity doesn't change, except there are, you know, uh, the technology components from the application server, you know, you know uh, uh, layer will be replaced by your WebLogic, you know, server, WebLogic, JSP, et cetera. Database standpoint, if you're currently on 11G or 12C or 12, you know, whatever the, you know, the, the release or version is, upgrading to 19C, you get the EBR, you know, addition-based redefinition as well, advantage. And we're going to talk about those, you know, um, in the later parts of the slide as well. One of the key things, you know, uh, the, the key factor driving time and resources that you need to consider in any upgrade is size of your EBS functional footprint. The other concern that we have seen or heard from our customers or from our prospects is how much of my customizations would, would work? Or how do I know what kind of customizations have been used? Uh, how do I know what customize, how many customizations does exist? So these are some of the factors driving time and resource in, you know, when you plan for an upgrade. Your footprint, number of modules. We would like to, you know, uh, uh, let's say we're going through, you know, there's an, you know, a customer who's going through a acquisition or merger. Is it, uh, when is the right time to bring in the acquire, you know, the data into the EBS? Is that, you know, you, you bring in the data, you know, uh, or you do the conversion first and do an upgrade or I'm adding, you know, a new module. Should I do it during the upgrade or should I plan it, you know, as a phase two? Other IT changes combined with the EBS upgrade, right? It could involve all the, you know, uh, 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 levels, like it could be from database upgrade, instance consolidation, hardware, you know, your infrastructure support, meaning I'm on Red Hat in a version six or OEL, can I do an in-place upgrade, you know, from an OES, which is, you know, you probably need to be on a version seven. I'm on Sun Solaris 11. Can I do an in-place upgrade? There are many cha you know, the challenges, you know, or changes that is, you know, involved uh, with the EBS upgrade. And of course, complexity of topology, implementing a supplier, adding, you know, new application tier nodes, or adding a DMZ, you know, uh, you know uh, 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 with with the uh, external you know application to uh, configuring your DMC with your external you know application tier nodes and more importantly the technical skills readiness to adopt the 12 to x technology changes from a DBA standpoint you know uh, adapting the ADOP getting used to your you know the patch the patching you know file system versus the live file system and of course the web logic maintenance when you talk about upgrade approach, I mean, honestly, there are two, two, you know, two approaches, right? Standard versus re-implementation. Let's talk about standard, up, you know, upgrade approach. A standard upgrade approach is you, you do a technical upgrade, no additional modules. You know, you, you know, you install 12.2x in a file system, upgrade your database and application tier or application tier and database it really depends on you know which one should go first if you're currently on you know 11g it makes sense to you know do an upgrade you know db upgrade and then application server upgrade or application you know your ebs you know release upgrade or if you're currently on a 12.2 the database upgrade can be done you know at a later stage as well because your 12.2x you know 12.9 is you know or 12.10 is going to be supported on 12c another thing to consider if it's enough you know, it's a standard upgrade or not you're not modifying adding changing your you know uh, chart of accounts i'm not you know the the existing segments will stay as is no changes required or costing i'm using standard or aggregate in you know, the costing methods doesn't change any of those 
or my calendars, right? Doesn't change. So these are some of the you know, things that you need to consider from a, from a standard upgrade approach standpoint. When it comes to re-implementation, like I said, you know, your accounting segments are being changed. Costing method, I'm going to you know, change from standard to aggregate or a different costing method. Or I'm in the process of, you know, of, of uh, you know, you know, an acquisition or a merger, M and A activity. When is the right time to bring in that? You know, is it you know during the upgrade or before the upgrade or after the upgrade? Those are, those are some of the things that you know have to be considered, you know, for a, from a re-implementation, you know, standpoint. More in detail from a re-implementation. Standpoint, we already talked about it, you know, like, you know, it, uh, if it is, you know, the change in, you know, your accounting segments, costing method, calendar, right? That's again, more on, on a minimal technical, you know, standpoint, but it does, it may, it may force to a re-implementation approach. Functional. Right, you know, you know, the line of business needs to get to the latest release level and change may original setup choices. Any of your setup configurations needs to be changed, adding a future segment, right? All those things may force, you know, for a re-implementation approach. We already spoke about standard upgrade, um, you know, as is technical, no additional add, uh, no add-on modules, or no, you know, changes in in the uh, in the accounting or major, you know, configurations. As a promise, let's talk about a little bit about ADOP. What is this online patching? Like I said, you know, with the 12.2x architecture, you can have a dual file system set up where while your business is in the live production system, you can still apply your EBS patches. Of course, that excludes, you know, database, you know, database patches. Database does require some bounces. Or majority of the time you may need to bounce listener and your, you know, DB. But major, you know, the EBS up, you know, uh, patches can be applied to your patch, you know, or ADOP instance or the patch file system without just, you know, interrupting any of your business. With the minimal maintenance window, you should be able to apply those. Instead, you know, the traditional applying, you know, the EBS patches is you do AD patch, uh, you know, not majority of the patches are available as hot fixes, meaning, you know, when the production is live, you cannot, you know, not many of the, you know, the EBS patches are, you know, hot patches. You ha always have to, you know, apply, bring the application services down. There are mainly, you know, five components or, you know, uh, five steps in, you know, in uh, understanding the online patching cycle with this 12 to, you know, 12 to X. You just need to, you know, you have to prepare copy your production application code code and test you to even, you know, the, the, the customizations on your online patching file system. You create the new patch edition in the database. You apply those patches, you finalize, meaning, you know, whatever you do in, as uh, uh, part of the post uh, uh, patch process, right? Compiling invalid objects, compiling JSPs, and then wait for a good, you know, maintenance in a downtime win window. Whatever you you know you guys agree with your business in terms of you know, from a from a maintenance window standpoint. Cut over, which is restart application on patch edition. And cleanup is you know removing obsolete objects. The biggest advantage adopting this you know ADOP or online patching is downtime is is limited to a short cutover period. And you can still continue your critical business operations on all activities in your production live while you're you know prepping you know uh, uh, you know prototyping the you know the the patching in your patching you know uh, ADOP instance again this talks about the same thing that you know I, I just mentioned in the previous slide uses a GL file system your patch file system as well as your you know your live system 
all your customizations can also be, you know, be tested, you know, when we apply the patches, you know, on the uh, uh, ADOP instance. Again, summary of online patching, all EBS patching for 12.2x and beyond are online patches. Like I said, you know, uh, with the exception of the database, you know, CPUs and some of the patches, um, majority, you know, of the EBS application release patches are online patches. You can apply in the, you know, in the uh, uh, using, you know, uh, ADOP on the patch, you know, file system. A single copy of the transactional data is stored in your database. Basic online patching copies the code, but not the transactional data, right? You can test your customizations. Um, you know, again, online patching does not mean zero downtime. That, you know, uh, to, you know, the, meaning to migrate the, the patches to your production or live system, but it requires a minimal, you know, uh, downtime. You know, avoids the the traditional patching where it requires some, you know, uh, uh, a longer you know downtime and like i said online patching cannot be used for database or os patching um, that you, you still need to plan for a downtime you know for applying your database and os patches all right these what are the other challenge or the uh, we hear from uh, most of our customers or you know the prospects is you know how do I handle my existing customizations and decide which to upgrade? Right? How many of my customizations seamlessly work? You know, from when I you know, do an upgrade from 12.13 to 12.2, you know, 12.2x. So most of the you know, system integrators generally have services and tools, you know, to inventory Kimblis. Uh, identifies all your customizations, extensions, modifications, provided if you followed the best practices adopting the custom schema you know uh, coding standards and things like that uh, oracle also have advanced customer services team uh, providing uh, which provides the kemli uh, management service um, oracle also offers a product called application managers uh, management suite for e business suite that reports uh, all the you know ebs customizations and we're going to talk about our uh, our uh, assessment tool as well. In addition to identify the customizations, in most of the cases, it does 100% you know automatic you know remediation as well. There are few you know you know uh, scenarios that we cannot apply 100% automation or remediation. I uh, as I should say, uh, we're going to talk, uh, address those in Q and A as well as in the later part of the slides. This, this is a slide talks about our EBS assessment tool. It gives a true cost of ownership in terms of identifying your customizations. What does it take? How many resources, timeline, et cetera. Also, uh, it does assist in, in multiple iterations, CRP1, CRP2, or whatever the naming conventions that you guys use. And you know, a great you know, uh, reporting as well as project management you know, tool has been integrated as part of our upgrade assessment you know, uh, 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 Upgrade assessment tool. All right, this is something that I talked about applying custom code during the upgrade. And again, it's, it's sounds from you know similar to you know it, it will it is similar to the online patching steps. You prepare, apply, finalize, cut over, and clean up. Custom code, you know, typically from a 12.13 to 12.2x. If we, you know, if we have followed the the best practices in terms of how to handle the obsolete or you know uh, objects in 12.13, for example, PO vendors has been replaced with AP suppliers. If that has been you know handled properly, then you know there is going to be very minimal you know uh, remediation effort you know that is required, you know from a from a customization standpoint. Another thing that you need to is you know, Oracle has recommended using some of the best practices in terms of you know the the schema references, right? So if those have been have been implemented, the customization you know the remediation effort for on on the customizations um, you know uh, is is uh, you know is minimal. But again, it depends on the number of customizations. When was the last time the customizations have been used? 
our assessment tool will even identify if there are customizations that have been not been touched or used in the last 12 months 24 months whatever and bring it to the business in terms you know from a deep you know, analysis in terms of whether this customization really needs to be part of the upgrade so minimal set of standards must be met for custom code to run correctly on 12.2x like i said about you know uh, the how to you know if we if the obsolete, or, you know, the uh, 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 obsolete objects has been handled properly in the custom code in the prior upgrades. Additional standards must be met for custom code to be online patchable. Like I was talking about schema, you know, references, right? You know, should not be using, P, you know, PL or AP dot, you know, going forward. So those, and of course, decision is based on import, you know, the minimizing downtime. And most of these, you know, but the uh, the patches, you know, can be applied online. Next slide. Preparing custom code prior to the upgrade project. So the 12.2x standard violations and recommend, you know, recommended fixes are readiness reports. There are, you know, delivered, you know, standard, you know, the uh, out of the box, you know, uh, delivered sequels from Oracle. Identifies the schemas that you must, you know, register with the EBS before online patching enablement. Also, the custom objects that you must manually fix before online patching enable uh, enablement setup during the upgrade process. Also, there are a couple of, you know, the database in, in file system standards checker, checker, you know, the sequels that checks your database objects and code, which are violating the 12.2x coding standards or development standards. So consistency with the new logical view of the data model, right? You know, all code must access the data model via the app synonym. Like I was talking about AP dot, PO dot, you know, all those references in your customizations have to be replaced. There's no exception to that rule. Uh, I mean, you can, you can, you can, but the problem is you will not, you know, you'll see the challenges in terms of the data. Uh, so all code must, must access the data model via the app synonym. If the synonyms doesn't exist, uh, the system integrator or whoever is working on, you know, remediate, you know, the, uh, the remediation activity for the customization should inform your DBS in terms of the synonyms that needs to be created. Any code accessing the physical model risk, accessing obsolete, you know, uh, columns. Here's another thing that I would like to mention, you know, I mean, there are many factors that you know that uh, you need to consider as part of your you know your families or upgrade processes. When was the last time you have done the upgrade? Um, are we ready? You know, are we cloud ready? You know, you talk about OCI, AWS. You know, I mean, we'll talk about on-prem versus you know the uh, the the cloud uh, adoption as well, the cloud journey. But there's no you know there's no need. I mean the on-prem slash you know on-prem is going to be supported till 2031 as well as you know your current you know uh, the R12 12.2x being on cloud or on on-prem will be supported till you know uh, till uh, 2031. Summary of upgrading and managing customizations. Get familiar with the 12.2x architecture. Decide the standards compliance level, like we talked about. Replacing all the you know the the schema references you know uh, uh, with uh, the apps synonyms. Create an upgrade project for your customizations. You really need to have a you know a crystal clear project plan in 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 identifying those customizations as well as how to handle those customizations. Again, get familiar with the development and deployment standards for a 12.2x. Take advantage of the online patching. Both for your customizations as well as your patch full in you know, a patches you know full compliance, right tools to maintain your customizations. Provisioning upgrade requirements. We're going to talk about some of the you know the changes that is going to be you know uh, you're going to see or adapting you know uh, the 12 to uh, 12 to uh, X architecture. It does require dual file system, right? Like I was talking about patching, you know, 
and what changes you probably your file system you know storage will increase so consider cpu and memory need for online patching increase or decrease the number of adop workers meaning system resources consumed by by a patch can be throttled if you're familiar with the ad patch you know in the 1213 or you know prior to 122x environments ad patch also assigns the workers depending on the number of jobs that is you know pending right similarly adop also increase or decrease the number of adop workers so if your 12.1 production you know, environment fully utilizes CPU and memory, you might need to look at from, you know, uh, do a you know, complete you know, analysis in terms of, you know, uh, any additional hardware resource requirements. From a database and application tier sizing, you need to allow two gig of free memory for the database tier machine, and an extra three gig of free, me free memory for the application tier for online patching. Also, for on the web logic side, web tier, there are you know certain JVM parameters. You know uh, uh, settings will change. Two man, you know example two manage instances with a four gig heap size for each will provide much better response times than one JVM with a total heap size of eight gig, and that's just an example. Validate your sizing through testing with representative data and workloads. And of course, discuss with your system integrator and hardware vendor. Continuing our, you know, the provision of grid environments, system table spaces, you know, there's a, there's an increase, you know, you got to increase from 25 gig to 50 gig. You need to double or, you know, its current space allocation. Seed table in the table space needs to be double. And of course, the file system, you know, uh, since we're maintaining two, you know, file systems for, you know, if you, you know, for the online patching and your live could, could require, you know, double the space on the file system as well. Plan for any platform migration. You know, if you're doing an upgrade and a platform migration, consider your approach, database tier. I mean, 21C has been released. Should we really, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, adopt 21C or you know they're releasing this summer, I guess, right? 19C. When you know when do we you know uh, get our database upgrade in you know uh, in the sequence, application tier first or you know database tier first or you know and vice versa. Many customers migrate the DB tier in a project you know in a prior project and downtime. I mean, we have, we have seen many customers have, you know, already migrated to 19C, you know, uh, or, you know, either from 11G or 12C. Others migrate the DB in the same project and downtime as the 12.2X upgrade. Application tier, you can migrate the application tier using a standard 12.2X upgrade process. Right, you know, for migrating from 12.1 or upgrading from 12.13 12, is a two step process. You need to, you know, uh, uh, get an upgrade your 12.13 to 12.20 and apply the version, you know, the release, you know, uh, the patches, meaning an upgrade to 12.2x, which is 9 or 10. Understanding the EBS, you know, 12.2x upgrade process in, you know, in detail. Prepare your database. Confirm DB is at in a 12. You know the minimum certified you know, for the 12.2x is in a 12, 12C or 19C, and apply DB patches. Identify the code level. Install. You know for you know, the step two is basically upgrading your you know EBS. Install you know from in a 12.2.0 file system from your Red CD. Apply application tier patches identified by your EBS, you know, uh, uh, co uh, the code level checker. Upgrade to 12.2.0. Enable your online patching, and then upgrade to your latest EBS code level. You know that means applying your text, you know, uh, TXK updates, uh, the 12.2.0 uh, uh, X rub patches, uh, localizations if any, if applicable, and then. Post upgrade steps is apply transitions, tra uh, sorry, translations, 
custom application tier code, deploying your custom application tier code, or your, you know, meaning, you know, deploy your customizations, deploy your external integ you know, uh, integrations, and then fine tune, you know, your production to, you know, for the uh, production capacity. Sequencing, this is, you know, we talked a little bit about sequencing, right? When to do upgrade, you know, DB first, or when, you know, should I start with DB, uh, you know, and then, you know, uh, sequence, you know, and then to application, or should I do application tier first, and then, you know, and, and, and then DB at a later stage. I mean, from a, from a support standpoint, you know, the application 1213 is the supporting, you know, you have nearly 30 weeks to plan for your application. So that means, you know, application tier needs to be upgraded to 12, 12, to X to be on the you know the on the supported or premier to, to uh, take advantage of the premier support, but when it comes to you know the database, um, you have a little bit room you know or time you know to be able to upgrade, which is you know the uh, 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 to 19C is uh, you know, uh, June to, you know or mid 2022. So. I mean, the question comes, you know, two serial projects are combined into, you know, one project really depends on your landscape. We have customers, you know, that has, you know, you know uh, zillions and zillions uh, or, you know, or, you know, I mean, I would I, I shouldn't say I claim uh, zillions and zillions of, you know, terabytes, but definitely, uh, you know, a, a significant amount of transactional where, the, you know, and also 24 by 7 operations. Where we would need to, you know, uh, uh, take a, you know, need to take an, a phased approach in terms of upgrading them, both from the operating uh, all all layers, you know, you know, infrastructure, like, meaning the operating system slash, you know, the infra, the core, you know, the hardware, and then database and application tier. All right. So key things that to, to you know, there's no single right answer that applies to you know all. Decision is based on what works best for your business, and don't fall for all these, you know, like you know, twenty one C or OCI or AWS, you know, cloud migration. But key things that you need to remember is database eleven two extended support ended on that you know December thirty first twenty twenty. Twelve one three premier support ends on December thirty first twenty twenty one. DB twelve C or twelve one you know supports ends in mid 2022 for any successful upgrade you know uh, the, you know there are some you know certain you know standards or best practices needs to be you know, uh, implemented create a task by task plan consistent with the latest you know 1212 to 122x upgrade document that should include, or you know, you know, part of that, you know, the the uh, the project plan should have a mini project plan in terms of how to handle the customizations, and you know, three iterations from a best practices, CRP one, CRP two, and UAT needs to be planned. Refine the plan, the task, and timing details as you iterate through, you know, test upgrades. Part of your, you know, your testing should also include, you know, uh, testing your backup and recovery, testing your cloning, testing, you know, because there are a lot of things that would change. Or if you, you know, if you, you know, uh, if you're planning to do, uh, you know, a uh, I supplier or some of the, you know, the uh, modules that requires DMZ configuration or introducing the DMZ, dematerialized zone, um, you know, uh, which requires an SSL, those needs to be tested as part of your, you know, upgrade process. That includes your cloning, your product, you know, uh, your non-production environments from your production, and seek help when obstacles are met. Uh, don't impro improvise. All right, testing the upgrade process key consideration. Any upgrade, you know, to a major and a release level, you need to plan. You must plan for a full functional testing. There could be, you know, a, 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 a customized workflows. Could be, you know, could be, uh, could be, you know, uh, uh, could be, you know, could be changed or uh, could fit, you know, working. Web ADI templates could have changed. So you need a plan for full functional testing, load and volume testing, upgrade cutover testing. Critical to the 12 x upgrade. Carefully test customizations. 
and integrations. Test the 12.2x online patching cycle. Performance testing, you know, the main upgrade driver at the earliest. Do performance testing in parallel with functional testing. Use diagnostics to identify long running in a sequels or jobs. And then minimize duration of task before and after upgrade. Identify manual task you can script. Identify tasks that you can perform in parallel. Identify tasks you, can, uh, tasks you can move outside the upgrade downtime, meaning database replatforming, et cetera. Conclusion? Many, you know, I mean, you really have to take control of your environment. When was the last time you have done this upgrade? You know, uh, in the in, from an EBS standpoint, you know, that includes this, you know, uh, uh, magnitude and size of an upgrade, you know, like, you know, uh, when you do from 12.3 to 12.2x. Take control of your environment, access, you know, architecture, infrastructure requirements. Upgrade your infrastructure. You might run into, you know, uh, uh, a, a challenge when you're planning for an up OS where you cannot do an in-place uh, in place upgrade. You may have to choose an, a migration path. Spin up new 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 VMs, spin up new new hardware, and then do a migration up, you know, from your uh, from an OS standpoint. So upgrade infrastructure, operating system, and database in a separate downtime, if you know as needed. Take control of the environment with adequate documentation. Review backup and recovery policies. Test your backup and recovery policies. Review old and transient data. When you talk about you know old and transient data, I have you know zillions and zillions of data in my you know auto management since it's implemented. You know when we implemented 11.5.10.2, whatever the instance may, whatever this you know the case may be. What is that you know? Do plan for you know if there's you know archiving or purging needs to be you know needs to needs to take you know uh, happen in this an upgrade. From a statutory or whatever the reporting, you know, mechanism. Review your high availability and DR requirements. Take control of your pre update assessment of Kimberley's. And now, you know, do a complete analysis of your Kimberley's customizations. Review of those customizations with business if you know, any of those, you know, was never been used in the last 20, 24 months or 12 months or six, six months. Take care of, uh, take control of the application with adequate documentation. And then, if it is wherever it is possible, do technical upgrade in place. Meaning, we need to add on, you know, add additional modules as part of this upgrade. When is the best time, right? Do a technical upgrade and add on the modules. Even in MA, if there's a possibility, Try to upgrade your, you know, your current environment, the EBS, you know, footprint to 12 to X, and adopt a conversion or migration from other legacy slash, you know, the desperate systems into the Oracle EBS. Go for functional upgrade and new modules such as ECC post upgrade. And ECC again, no additional licensing, or you want to implement the. Uh, so all those, you know, you know, uh, which is part of the, you know, your current licensing, implement or, you know, uh, as a post upgrade, you know, step. Take control of the process and people. Remediation, especially on your customizations. Well, it could be workflows. It could be your custom packages. Your, you know, MDs, modifications, extensions, forms, personalization, everything, you know. It could be a collaborative remediation to take control of the process and people. Role-based training on 12.2x, business transformation and, I mean, business transformation roadmap. I'd like to conclude, so I do not, you know, fall prey to false promises and mites about cloud migrations, you know, you know, so I need to know the do's and do's in terms of an, you know, an upgrade in a plan.
with that, I would like to conclude and open up for Q and A. Thank Kata, thank you. That was very insightful. Now at this time, as Venkat mentioned, we'd like to remind all the attendees to ask any questions, and you could do so by typing them into the Q&A window on your screen. So please do so, and we will answer accordingly. Thank you. I don't see any questions, but if you're thinking about anything, anything that you want further clarification while Venkata is on, please do take advantage of that. Thank you. I do have a question, and the first question is, what would be the timeline or the duration of the upgradation? And that's our first question that I've Very received. Very good question. Sure, thank you, Patty. Very sure. good question. A typical upgrade from a 12.13 to 12.2, 12.2 X, from a pure technical upgrade standpoint, meaning no additional modules you know, to be you know, implemented, you know, or no m and activity, or no consolidation, no re-implementation, right? A standard upgrade with a minimum, you know, three iterations could, you know, uh, uh, will be around 20 to 20, you know, uh, anywhere between 20 to 24 weeks. That includes three iterations of testing, CRP1, CRP2, and UAT. remediation of all your customizations and and you know all of the you know post upgrade you know uh, uh, process as well Another question is with dual file system 12.2, is there any fallback system in play? Discovering well, a failure in runtime, if you will, and run addition. Okay. Uh, yes, you can. You can implement the fallback, you know, process as well in a, in a dual file system. So, in other words, if I if I understand your question, you're talking about, you know, the AD patch roll back your changes, you know, if there's an error in the, you know, applying a patch. The, yes, the, you know, the similar, you know, the mechanism has been, you know, implemented or introduced in AWOP as well. You can roll back to the, you know, uh, uh, because if you look at, you know, from, you know, I started working from 10.6 and Oracle, you know, NCA versions from 11.03. Oracle process whenever it applies a patch, right? It, it basically backs up the 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 uh, the files that is going to be touched, right? You know, the the AD patch or ADOP does an analysis and backs up all the files, you know, before it you know replaces it. So there is a fallback mechanism in you know uh, ADOP as well, um, you know, at at all you know the stages, and you can use you know uh, uh, use. Uh, addition, you know, uh, 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 based, you know, file systems as well. Are there any further questions? In addition, I also want to make note that uh, there was an audience question that the recording will be automatically sent from GoToWebinar within 24 hours to review anything that we have gone over as well, just for your knowledge.
Are there any further questions from the audience and those participants, if you will? Bankita, do you have any further points that you would like to add as a highlight? Sure, I would like to reiterate again, you know, from a technical upgrade start, or, you know, te uh, a technical upgrade versus, you know, the uh, standard upgrade versus the re-implementation. You know, if you're considering the, uh, you know, uh, the uh, adding additional modules, um, you know, do a technical upgrade first and, you know, bringing the additional modules. And again, this is based on you know, our experience, you know, what we have seen um, mm -hmm. uh, with many industry verticals, you know, uh, from an upgrade standpoint. Um, that gives you, you know, again, you have 30 weeks or, you know, close to 30 weeks, you know, uh, from now uh, till you, you know, do your testing, you know, uh, uh, go live and be prepared for a year end processing, right? You know, you're running your, you know, uh, year end, you know, 1099s or payroll, you know, the, all those, you know, regulatory, you know, uh, statutory, you know, reporting standpoint. So, plan you know uh, in such a way that in, any of the you know the uh, add-on modules you know from the on the uh, 12 to x you know as a phase uh, phase approach do technical update first and then the phase update that's that my recommendation you know if you if you're planning for an update in addition audience please please feel free to share any questions you may have in the future uh, that you might not have thought about during our presentation by simply emailing to webinars at abstechcorp.com, A-P-P-S-T-E-K-C-O-R-P.com. Another you know, thing that I would like to mention is, you know, to, you know, you need to have a, a, a crystal clear project plan in terms of how to handle your customizations. Uh, and again, don't fail for, you know, the 100% automatic remediation. There's no such tool that I'm aware of, you know, that can handle all the uh, all the, uh, uh, the different types of customizations that, you know, can be uh, can be handled. Even our assessment tool is nearly, you know, 100% uh, 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 I mean, uh, automatic remediation, but not 100%. When I say that is, I mean, I probably say that honestly, there's certain scenarios that, you know, that cannot be handled. But no, regardless of whether you do, you adopt a manual remediation or automatic remediation, you still need to do a full functional testing. You still need to do your unit testing from your develop, you know, from your Kenry developer standpoint. Uh, those things add up, you know, uh, to 20, you know, uh, anywhere from 20 to 24 weeks of uh, planning required for your, you know, upgrade. So uh, the 30 weeks, that you know, nearly 30, 31 weeks left, you know, between now and the end of the year, where the premier support will be be supported. That appears to be all the questions that we have presently. So last call, if you will, for any questions, any clarifications that you may have. Um, that would be great. Okay, it doesn't appear that we have any questions. Uh, hope that you did enjoy, uh, and I'm assuming that there was a lot of information, deep dive information, technical information that Venkata went over appropriately. So please, any questions you might have in the future, simply reach out to us and we'll be there to, to clarify and to answer any of the questions that you may have. Any closing comments, Venkata? I think I covered everything, Patty. But like you I said, did. you know, do 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 plan. You know, uh, you know, uh, without you know any. I mean, keeping surprises away, right? Meaning, you know, your Camleys, your hardware, you know, infrastructure, database, you know, upgrade. Don't fall for you know. I mean, 21 Cs, you know, is going to be you know released this summer, but don't do not plan for 21 C. Um, you know, as as it's not in the certification metrics. There are certain things that you know again. From a best practices standpoint, uh, you know, planning is very critical, you know, for any upgrade.
that's all I have to say, you know. And me too I, as well. So I want to thank everyone in closing for being for taking time out of your day or out of your evening to to listen to what we have to say and hope that you got so much out of it. Uh, thank you for your time, Venkata. Thank you so much for going through the deep dive. Um, appreciate it. Uh, thank you, everyone, all participants thank as you. well. Thank Let's you. Have a good day. You too.